back to another video. Today, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to duplicate equipment. Actually, this glitch is a lot more than just duplicating equipment. You can duplicate equipment, you can transfer durability between equipment, and you can get infinite rupees with this glitch as well. This is a glitch, it is called menu overloading, and to do it, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need about six multi-shot bows. Sometimes it might work with five, sometimes you might even need as much as seven, but you probably don't need that many. You should just get six, just to be safe. That may seem like a tall order, but really it's not. It doesn't matter for this glitch how many arrows it shoots, as long as it's more than one. It could be a duplex bow, a lionel bow, a savage lionel bow, even a forest dweller's bow. Some places where you can get these are here, over at Shodansu Shrine. You can go to the Yiga Clan hideout. There are a bunch of Yiga foot soldiers. There are Yiga, Yiga foot soldiers everywhere, so you can just get multi chop bows from them. You can go get a... Um, Forest Dwellers Bow from the um, one of the Korok Trials over in Korok Forest, which shoots three arrows. And you can also get Lionel Bows from Lionels. You can get a Lionel Bow from the Lionel on Plymouth Mountain over near Zora's Domain. Um, there are two Lionels over here in the Osera Plains. There are also two Lionels over here in the Tabantha um, Tundra. But yeah, um, there are Lionels everywhere. So, you can do any of those methods that I just told you about. Or, you can also go to Rito Village, and there's multi shot bows over there as well. So, once you get your six bows, you're also going to need shock arrows. <clears throat> you don't need any more than one shock arrow, and you're also going to need whatever you want to duplicate or transfer durability between. So, first things first, I'm going to tell you guys how to start the glitch. So, number one, you're gonna want to equip one of your multi-shot bows and equip your shock arrows. Then press ZR, just tap it, so that you don't shoot an arrow, but Link pulls out his bow. And then go back to your menu and drop it and equip another multi-shot bow. You'll see that he has dropped the bow and has another one in his hand. And keep doing this over and over again and keep going back into your menu until eventually this will happen. See, I needed six bows for that. And now you'll see on the right of your menu, Link is just a head. You know, there, no body, no, no nothing. This means that our menu is now overloaded. This will enable us to do our glitch today. So, first thing that is going to happen is we're going to duplicate our weapons. I do not know of a method of duplicating the Master Sword because for this glitch, you need to be able to drop whatever you're going to duplicate. So yeah. Um, and also, if you want to duplicate things, you're probably going to need a Great Thunderblade. Um, this is kind of rare for some people, but there's a super easy way to get it. Just go to the Coliseum Ruins if you don't know where that is. It is right off the Great Plateau to the north. And in the Colosseum Ruins, there will be Moblins, Lizalfos, Bacoblins, and a Lionel in the base. And the Moblins on the top layer will have Thunder Weapons, Great Thunder Blades, whatever. So, just go over there, you can get one, and it's great. So, once you have your Great Thunder Blade, we're going to make something called the Shock Trap. So, equip your Great Thunder Blade, and then pull it out, and press Y. In the middle of Link's Swing... When you see the sparkles going around, press plus to go into your menu. And as long as Link is halfway through his swing, this will work. So I'm going to press Y. And now he's halfway through his swing. You can see it's yellow in the background. I'm going to drop the Great Thunderblade. That is still conducting electricity. So let's say, oops, I dropped the Savage Lionel Shield and I run into it. Ah, oh, I'm taking damage. I just got shocked. This will make me drop whatever I'm holding. Let's say I'm holding this. I just dropped the Great Thunderblade. Or Great Flame Blade. Um, you're going to take damage for this, so I'm going to just equip all of this stuff. Once you've made your shock trap, and which, in order to do, you will need to drop something metal. And you can use magnesis if you drop it in the wrong place. So, once you do that, you're going to equip whatever it is you want to duplicate. Whatever weapon you want to duplicate. Right here, since I only have one Ancient Battle Axe++, plus plus, I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to duplicate the Great Frost Blade. Those are two pretty good weapons, and so I want to duplicate them. So, equip whatever it is you want to duplicate. I'm going to duplicate the Ancient Battle Axe++ first. 
and make sure that there's more weapons in your inventory. So now overload your menu, just like how I said before, with your shock arrows and your multi-shot bows. Like I said, it doesn't matter how many arrows they shoot as long as it's more than one. And once it's overloaded, go back to your weapons and you can just sheath whatever bow you have now. It'll still be overloaded, but that might happen. If you can see whatever you're gonna duplicate, so I can see my Ancient Battle Axe Plus Plus, that's bad. So I'll pull my bow out again, and now I can't see it anymore. And now I'm going to do something called an Equipment Desync. In my menu, I'm going to equip any weapon other than what I'm gonna duplicate. So I'm gonna equip the Master Sword, and you can see in the overworld, I still have the Ancient Battle Axe Plus Plus. So now if I go back to my menu, since it's not as overloaded anymore because I sheathed my bow back, You'll see the Ancient Battle Axe Plus Plus with Link, but the Master Sword in the actual selection menu. This is good. That means we're desynced. So remember, whatever you have in the overworld, which is here, that's what's going to get duplicated. So you're going to hold that, and you're going to make sure that the whatever you're not duplicating is equipped. And then you're going to run into the Shock Trap. You're going to drop the thing, but not really. You see, I still have the Ancient Battle Axe Plus Plus in my inventory. So if I pick this up, I now have two. How cool is that? I'm going to do that one more time for you guys, just in case you missed it. So I'm going to equip the Great Frost Blade, and you can see you can see it in the menu. If you can't, then you can just pick up some of your bows to un-overload the menu. And then now that I can see it, I'm going to overload my menu again by pulling out my bow and desync to whatever I want to not um, duplicate. So I can see it says Boulder Breaker. But I'm really holding the great frost, great frost blade. So now I'm gonna run into my shock trap. You do take damage, so make sure that you don't die. And now, like just like before, with the ancient battle axe plus plus, I have two great frost blades. This also transfers all durability and everything. So let's say my um, Boulder Breaker was badly damaged. If I duplicate it, I will have two badly damaged Boulder Breakers, which is kind of bad. So I'm going to go over in a bit durability transfer. But first, let's learn how to duplicate bows. This can be a little bit trickier for some people because um, the bows are what you use to overload. So you might not be able to or it might be tricky for you. But I'm going to tell you guys my trick and how I like to do it. So, um, I'm picking up all my bows, just because I'm going to show you guys again. And you're going to make sure that you don't drop whatever you're going to duplicate. So, I am going to duplicate my Strength and Lysel bow. I could duplicate one of my multi-shot bows. I could duplicate my Ancient bow. I could duplicate whatever. But I'm going to duplicate this, because it's not multi-shot bow, so it makes it a little bit harder. I will cover both, though. So, first, we're going to overload our menu. And make sure that you don't do any extra bows because that could mess up the glitch just a little bit. Now we're all done. And now I'm going to go out. I can like turn to the side and I'm still overloaded. So I'm going to drop this and equip what I want to duplicate. And you see the sound was kind of weird there because it didn't actually work. You see in the overworld, I don't have any bow. So I'm going to remove and re-equip. And it should now show Link in the side holding the Strength and Lysel bow. And in the overworld, as you can see, he is. But now it is overloaded again because it's not sheathed. Once it's sheathed, it does contribute ever so slightly to overloading. I don't know, it's weird because it's not multi-shot, but it still works. So right now, if I switch my bows, it will show it. But once I take it out, it won't show it anymore. So now that I have my Strength and Lysel bow, I'm going to desync to whatever I want, like I said before and run into the Shock Trap. Now I have two Strength and Lysel bows. Let's say I want to now duplicate my Savage Lionel bow because it's like the best bow I have. I am going to do the same as before, overload my menu, and make sure that I don't drop all of my Savage Lionel bows because I want one to duplicate. Now all I have to do is equip the Ancient bow and it won't show that I'm showing that I'm holding the ancient bow. So now we're desynced. I can just walk straight in. Now I have an extra Savage Lionel bow. Now I'm going to move on to durability transfer. This glitch is a little bit different 
from what I just showed you guys in that you won't need the shock trap for this one. And you're going to first, before you do anything, equip what you want to transfer durability between. So if the concept is a little bit misleading, transferring durability does not mean that what you're transferring from loses the durability. It basically means that it's copying the durability. So let's say I um, transfer my durability from the spring-loaded hammer to my great frost blade. My spring-loaded hammer will still have the same durability. But it works both ways. Let's say my great frost blade is badly damaged. It'll make my spring-loaded hammer badly damaged if I do it the other way around. So make sure not to give your Highland Shield a pot lid's durability. That would be bad. So, here we go. You're going to need to equip whatever you want to duplicate durability, or duplicate durability, actually, from, which is, for me, the spring-loaded hammer. Uh, at the end of the video, I will leave a list of what weapons and, wep and bows and shields are good for durability transfer, so you can look at that right now if you want and just come back right here, but I'm gonna continue. So the spring-loaded hammer has very high durability. We can just say that for now, and I'm going to equip that. Now, just like before, never changes. Um, overload your menu. And remember, if you can see more than just Link's head, that means that it can be overloaded a little bit more, so not like this. Link is fully overloaded right now, and we have the spring-loaded hammer equipped in both the overworld and the menu. Now we can see whatever it is so we can change, but we don't want that yet. So we have the spring-loaded hammer. Now we're going to pull out our bow. Now we're overloaded. We're going to desync to whatever we want to receive the durability. Whatever you want to receive the durability, you equip later. That's what you desync to. So I, didn't, I don't know if you guys knew this, but if in the menu you see that little glimmer on the, on the weapons, that means that the weapon has never been used. It's brand new. So, as you can see, my Ancient Battle Axe++ plus plus is not brand new, but the Spring-Loaded Hammer is. So, if I just use the Spring-Loaded Hammer to get rid of one durability, it'll get rid of one durability on both. And now, my Ancient Battle Axe++ plus plus has the durability of the Spring-Loaded Hammer. I'm going to show that one more time. So, in the menu, I, well, in the Overworld and the menu now, I have the Spring-Loaded Hammer. Now I'm going to pull up my bow and desync to the Boulder Breaker. And use it so that is the durability transfer it's a little bit trickier with bows so I will show you guys that now um, more time I'm just gonna overload my menu and make sure not to drop either the thing with the high durability or what's gonna receive the durability so don't drop either of those I'm going to transfer my durability to my royal bow so now that it's badly damaged I will overload my menu and then drop it and equip what your high durability thing is. If it doesn't play like the full um, sound of Link equipping it, if it's just like the whoosh, rather than the whoosh, then it didn't work. So you dropped it, but now I still don't have a bow. So I'm going to now unequip and re-equip the ancient bow. Pull it out. Now it's overloaded. Equip my low durability thing and fire my ancient bow. Now this has the durability of a once used ancient bow. And my ancient bow didn't lose any durability. Now that that is out of the way, we can go on to our final use of this glitch, which is infinite rupees. Um, in order to get this infinite rupees, you're gonna need a royal guard item of any kind. It could be a royal guard sword, royal guard spear, um, a royal guard's bow, a royal guard shield like I have anything I'm gonna use my royal guard shield but if you guys do not have anything royal guard you can just go over and if you have this um, shrine then definitely teleport to it Saskosa shrine just go to docks in the um, Hyrule Castle and then you can just literally use a fire arrow to light up this furnace thing and then it will open up Saskosa shrine so just um, fast travel over there, and then go up this path on the left of the shrine. All the way up, equip your Magnesis rune. And then up here, there's going to be a bookshelf and a metal crate. You can just use Magnesis on the metal crate and push the bookshelf out. So then once you're in this room, you might want to 
equip your Majora's Mask or Lizolfos Mask if you have it, just so that the Lizolfos that are in this room do not attack you. And then you're going to go over here. I've already done it, as you can see. You're going to use Magnesis. There's a bookshelf that's covering here. And you're going to um, Magnesis it and pull it out. And then behind here, there's a Royal Guard shield. This Royal Guard shield is preferable to a Royal Guard bow, um, just because it makes it a little bit easier. And that's how I'm going to be covering it. Uh, so yeah, just go ahead and take that. And now you can do your infinite rupee glitch. So now that you have whatever you need, you're gonna go over to the Riverside Stable. Um, that is right off of the Great Plateau on your way to um, Kakarika Village. You probably saw it. So just fast travel over to Wago Kata Shrine. And here we go. So, once you get to Riverside Stable, you're going to go inside and you're going to talk to Parsi. And the first time you talk to her, she's going to ask to see your Royal Guard thing, and she'll give you a gold rupee. But the second time, she'll actually try to take it from you. So, make sure that you don't do that. And for this, you're going to make sure that you only have one of that Royal Guard thing. So, now what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you're outside, because if you're inside, it, it, the game can do funky things. So, once you're outside, make sure that you don't have your Royal Guard shield equipped. And then overload your menu. It should work. If you're inside, it might not work. So if it doesn't work, then just go outside. And then equip your Royal Guard shield. And in the over overworld, you'll still have the whatever shield you chose to have. And then if you say, if she says this, and then she gives you the sapphire. And you can look over in your menu, and you will still have the Royal Guard shield. So now what you can literally do is just spam A and you can just spend time just spamming A and she will just give you infinite gems for your shield, but you won't actually even give her your shield. And then if you want to make an extra buck, you can go to Goron City and it's the jewel trade. So if you talk to Ramilla, she will give you extra rupees for 10 of each gem. Except not Opal, as far as I know. Um, so yeah, now you can just spam A and keep getting infinite rupees from her. Okay, guys. <clears throat> so, I promised you guys a list of the best um, weapons and items for durability transfer. Uh, the list is as follows. Four weapons, like melee weapons. Um, the best weapon to use for durability transfer is the spring-loaded hammer, which you can get from Kilton. If you've already done this skull-like thing, he's on this eye, you can talk to him, and then he'll disappear, and then you can see him at nighttime in any of the villages. So Luralind Village, Kakariko Village, any of the villages. Um, I'm gonna go to Kakariko Village just so that I can show you guys where exactly he is and show you guys how to get the spring-loaded hammer. Once you go over to Kakariko Village, um, I forgot to make it night. And then just sit by the fire until night. And then if you look all the way across Kakariko Village from the shrine, you will see this balloon. This is, this is Kilton's balloon. Um, you can just use your volley's gale if you want, or you can just follow that path, um, just straight under me. <clears throat> you can go around Impa's Palace, and then you can climb up that house and then climb up this, or you can go around, there's a Korok over here, um, and then just go up to this pat, this hill, and then Kilton is around the corner. Uh, you can trade monster parts with him for his currency, which is Mon, and then he will have the spring loaded hammer. Next up is bows. The best bow for durability transfer is the Ancient Bow, which is attainable at the Ancient Akala Ancient Tech Lab. Once you light the Ancient Furnace, you can go talk to Cherry and exchange ancient parts for an ancient bow. So, um, go over, go down to Ancient Bow. It requires one giant ancient core, um, 15 ancient springs, and 10 ancient gears. So once you have that, you can buy your ancient bow, and bam, that is all there is to it. Um, Last but not least, um, shields. As you guys probably guessed, 
The Hylian Shield is the most durable shield in the game. You can get it with durability up, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's kind of not worth it. So for now, I will just show you guys how to get the Hylian Shield normally. So for this method, you're going to go over to Hyrule Castle. Um, I um, fast travel to a shrine that I have that is near Hyrule Castle, but I didn't actually fast travel into Hyrule Castle because you don't need to because the place that you're gonna go is actually a very easy path from the entrance of Hyrule Castle. Once I fast travel over to Katachuki Shrine, I can just Revali scale, and we're gonna go over to the entrance. Once you're here, you can either open the door, which will alert some guardians to your position. Um, the guardians are easiest to take care of, so I am just going to open the door but you could just go all the way over to the, um, on top of these doors. And here we go. So as soon as you enter, you're gonna glide down on the left to that little um, entrance in, right in front of me. There's gonna be some luminous stones and other stuff. You can get this if you want. I'm just gonna stick to the path and go straight through here. So, um, once you go through here, you're gonna need to use a bomb. You can just explode these rocks. There will be rocks. And then these guys, you can also explode with bombs. And then you can go into this little, this thing, and then put a round bomb in there, explode it. Some people don't know that you can actually propel them by that. Um, you can just keep putting more bombs in there. The square bombs actually don't work, as far as I know. So, just use the round ones. Um, until you get to the end of the path, which is right here. Then you're gonna enter this room, and there will be a hot spring where you can um, regain health, and you can have this Korok by putting a um, hard-boiled egg into the thing, but we're just gonna go all the way around here, through this path, continue on this way, and once again, you're gonna wanna have Majora's Mask on so that the um, monsters that are in here do not attack you. Uh, just keep following this path that I am taking um, until you get to, it says, lock up. You're gonna go all the way to the end. Um, you're gonna have to explode some rocks there. I have Majora's Mask, so I don't need to actually um, take care of these guys. I am going to shoot the Eye of Alice and You can just shoot that, that will reveal a lever, which you can shoot, but dealing with the malice just opens it. And then continue to the left, uh, and then take a right, and here is the Stalnox. To defeat the Stalnox, I will now show you guys how one would defeat a Stalnox, and you need arrows for it, so as soon as it just puts its head on, you can just shoot its eye, if, if you can actually aim, I'm like, so just shoot it in the eye, and then uh, just repeat doing that, and eventually the eye will fall out. And then you can just keep hitting it with whatever weapon you want. And there we go, the Stalnox is now dead. Um, behind the Stalnox, over here, will be a chest. Inside the chest will be the Hylian Shield. You can go ahead, grab that, and bam, you have the Hylian Shield. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you found this tutorial useful. As I always say, this is a series, so if you have any questions on this glitch or have any glitches that you want to see me cover, I will be glad to learn those and cover those. Bye. Thank you.